Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Thursday. How we doing out there? Hope you're having a good day. Uh, we got a packed schedule today. You know, every Thursday we do classes for customers, and even if we're just talking about the markets or going on, going over what's happened, uh, I still like to update everybody. Let them know where we're at, where we stand, how investments are doing, how the markets are doing. And apparently now how the elections are doing. Uh, if you're not one of our customers, I hope you'll check us out, jazzwealth.com. Uh, obviously, we do this uh, for marketing, but hopefully to teach you something as well. We try to show you that we're teaching advisors and we're not just the typical advisors that go off and do whatever they do when, on a day-to-day -day basis. We like to teach you about your dough so you can learn how to ask really detailed questions. We're also playing a game. It's called Guess the Dow. If you would like to uh, take your shot, tell me where you think the Dow is going to close next week. If you're the closest without going over, we'll send you a $100 gift card. Uh, seriously, no strings attached. You can play the game. We've got a lot of you playing now, so uh, that's going well. But we don't market to you. Of course, you, anybody would probably let you know in the comments if we do market or do anything shady like that. Uh, just a fun game. Just a way to keep in touch with you and see how good you are at guessing where the Dow is going to close there. Hey, there'll be no show tomorrow, so sorry, the markets are going to fall because it seems that every day we don't do the show, the markets fall. And after a four day win streak, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe there's a chance for a Friday uh, falling there. We also got an election bet going on here in the office. We're going to see our video we posted earlier this week uh, covering all the different bets that we had going on. Um, I'm looking good. I'm looking good. Charlie did the numbers. The belt could be headed my way. We'll see. Obviously, the elections are still up in the air. And one quick thing, uh, the scroller's not going, but one quick thing, uh, it, have you noticed this week Right? Have you been paying attention to the show? Every now and then I mess with you guys and I try to do it without you guys noticing. Um, I've done where I say meow throughout the show and see if you guys catch that. So we posted that video. The last one I did, I actually sang a song over a course of days and then we edited it together to see if you noticed I was actually singing to you. Well, I've been messing with you again this week and um, I'll show you at the end. Let's see if you can guess uh, how I've been messing with you. Uh, I'll play the clip for you and see if you can figure out or notice that any of that was going on. Hey, uh, we're going to get started here, talk about the stock markets here today. I'll tell you what, uh, one of the uh, data points that's coming out, there's uh, interesting research being done on this. If your side wins, okay, great. If your side doesn't win, you know, the world's going to go over and uh, go around in terms of the election there. But this election cycle currently ranks as the worst polling ever on a national and state level basis there. Uh, so far on a state level, it is by far the worst that the polls have been off. Quite fascinating there if you follow the polls. I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories, but from a data perspective, they were off by the most ever. I know they had a lot to factor with the virus and everything, but really, really interesting there. Someone had also left a comment and said, would you tell me how the markets perform when we have a Democrat president, Republican Senate, and Democrat, uh, Democratic House? Uh, that's never happened. We went to do it. We said, okay, let's help them out. That's never happened. This could be the first time in history we have a Democrat president, Republican Senate, Democrat House. Uh, never. There's no data to go on because that's never happened. Kind of interesting there. All right, taking a look at the stock markets there. We'll go overall. Uh, you can see a nice positive day. The markets continue to rally, looking nice and strong here. Uh, we talked about this on the day before the election, how the market was right smack in the middle of this range. Uh, since the election, we moved to the top of the range. That has to be known as the obvious resistance area overhead. So for the S&P, you got 30 550 roughly somewhere in there with the extent of this rally over the last couple days you just have to imagine that that's going to be a spot where we stop uh, and and maybe get held up for a little bit best case scenario we trend sideways then break out if we do break above those highs that would be a very questionable break to new highs there in terms of wanting to buy that so be very careful there uh, the S&P, by the way, on track for the best election week in over 40 years. You'll know that from earlier in the week, I shared with you the performance of election weeks uh, going back through to 1976, playing around with Nixon and, for, uh, and uh, even further. Uh, here's 2016. Uh, the best actually ranks here in 2004 and, to, and 1996, and we are currently on track to beat that. Uh, we've that's that's cool. I mean, we're going to share the entire data tonight in our wine and wealth class for customers. But uh, so far, really, really good response. Uh, so it's good to know because I know a lot of people were concerned about what the markets could do and could still do, by the way. But so far, so good. Uh, we had over 100 positions. This is for our customers, actually. Uh, we had over 100 positions today, just today, gain 3% or more in our portfolios. So uh, we manage our own funds here at Jazz Wealth. It's part of the reason why I'm able to come with, to here, uh, here with you every day and share interesting things. 
Um, and so inside of those portfolios, over 100 positions gain 3% or more. Wasn't all good news though. Don't let me sit here and pretend like we're somebody special. I like to be honest with you guys. Paycom reversed course on us today, about 6%. Uh, it's a small position, but uh, due to earnings there, they had, a, and the earnings were good by the way, but uh, it wasn't as good as Wall Street was expecting. All looking good for them there, uh, just a good one. And then one of our really, really poor positions, just so you, you know, just to put it straight out there, full transparency, down about 10% today uh, in a gen. It was just, it's one of our smaller positions. It's only about a third of our portfolio, uh, a third of uh, a percent of our portfolio, sorry. Um, small position, but man, it just sucks. It's just not going well. I really dislike this area of the market, but uh, so far we'll see what happens, but that one maybe has to get the boot there and we'll see. Uh, what happens. Um, anyways, you may remember, if I go back over here, uh, you may remember that this last week before the election, I shared this data with you, went on record as the worst performing week before the election ever. Uh, looking all the way back, you can see all the way back to 1928 here, I shared this with you on Monday. Well, uh, Monday and Tuesday performed basically a little bit above average there, but it's kind of interesting that this is now going on record as the best, almost the best week ever in history. Uh, actually, at the moment, it ranks the second best. We'll cover that tonight in Wine and Wealth there, but we went from the worst week ever in election year to the best week, so rather interesting how quick we're reversing course there. Maybe a little too fast, don't you think? All right, here's the NASDAQ here. A great strong day, very strong over the last couple of days, if you ask me. Up another 3% here today. Uh, knocking on 40% gains year to date for the NASDAQ again. The FANG stocks were your biggest contributors overall today. Facebook getting the all clear from, uh, uh, well, Congress that they're not really going to come after them and do anything special. Looking into um, the communication services, you got 1% higher on names like Alphabet. I think even Netflix got 3%, just over 3% on the day. So those were your biggest contributors, the biggest gainers. Uh, sorry. Oh, come on. Tight. There we go. Qcom. We happen to own this one. We're excited to see this one as well. Qcom on earnings. Really, really strong move. And semiconductors in general, very strong. Uh, Mercado Libre is like uh, South America's Amazon, I guess, if you want to say that. Uh, up 10% today. That's going to be earnings related. Inside the NASDAQ, look at the semiconductors. That's where all the action was. Up 4% if you look at the SMH. Uh, and if you want to just take a look at some of the gainers in there, you got Corvo up 10%. That's earnings related. You got Cree up 7%. Great bounce on Cree today. Skyworks is a popular one in the space. Oh, there you go. Skyworks uh, up about 7% on the day. And Applied Materials, one of the bigger gainers in the semiconductor space, adding just about 8%. So looking really good there. By the way, we had a Fed rate decision today. That's normally the news of the day sort of just got washed away, right? Did you know that the Fed made a decision on interest rates today? They left things as normal and flat, and they basically said, no matter what happens, they're gonna keep supporting the market, keep supporting the economy in more ways than one. So when you've got the power of the Fed, there's that old saying, you don't fight the Fed. Uh, speaking of things that you may wanna learn, I didn't say anything about that, actually. Uh, we got some Vintips videos here. Yesterday's video you apparently liked a lot. Uh, how to retire with $500,000, a specific plan. Not this general with 4% and all this great stuff. Specifically, line by line, how do you retire with that kind of dough if that's all you got? Um, we did a read off of our notes from Jazz uh, so you can see what that's all about. Uh, there's a new uh, retirement act being proposed and actually making good progress at the moment to be done by the end of the year. We covered that on Monday. And tomorrow, we're gonna cover what happens if you have an IRA that you're contributing to, but you also have a 401k at work or your spouse does. What are the rules there and how do we break that down? Because uh, a lot of people make that mistake and sadly, we spend a lot of our time helping you fix that mistake. So that happens there. Hey, our research site, don't know if you had a chance to check it out. Um, this is the research site. If you can't be a customer, then uh, it's 13 bucks a month, it's really cheap if you ask me. It really helps us out and supports kind of the things that we're trying to build here. Uh, but if you go inside of it, we've got a lot of great posts. We're working on one about the gun stocks relative to the uh, background checks. Is there any correlation between how the uh, gun stocks perform after background checks hit new highs? We're gonna cover that. We went through the S&P sectors, looking for cool ideas there to kind of see where all the action is and what you can do there. We talk about restaurant industry. Uh, if you're one of our customers, you actually get access to the uh, all the wine and wealth classes as well, in addition to the research. Um, and so, uh, so many cool posts there. I'm not using that as marketing today, just really, really cool. And of course, tonight, if you're one of our customers at eight o'clock, this thing will pop up live. I'll be there with you. Uh, but if you want to join us there, it is uh, on a research or on a website, jazzwealth.com 
forward slash research. It's 13 bucks a month, no strings attached, and we even let you control the membership. You don't have to email us, you don't have to ask us. You sign up, you don't like it, you can sign out, no questions asked, it's all automated, so no games being played there. You guys know I'm really big on those games. I, I, I can't have us being known for somebody like that. Okay, let's do the sector breakdown here today. You can see everything was basically green on the day. Energy just went negative right there at the end of the day. All the action, basic materials today. Take a look at basic materials breaking out. I've been walking you through this here, moving back to highs. Today it broke out really, really strong stocks in this space. Uh, just a broad rally overall. By the way, basic materials up 7.5% over the last five days. That one has to get some attention. Financials get some attention as well because they reverse course. They're teasing us again. Yesterday, they were one of the lower sectors despite the markets moving a little bit higher. Well, quite a bit higher. Uh, today, reversing all of that 2.5% gain on the day. Uh, it was the third best performing sector for the uh, day and up 5.5% just for this week. These are really impressive moves if you ask me uh, going uh, through the different sectors. Tech was one of the stronger areas. With a Biden presidency and a mixed Congress, you have tech stocks that are basically free from regulation or any meaningful regulation being passed. And so those stocks have been just on a tear, uh, doing really well there. Um, I want to point out the Chinese stocks. You, oh, no, sorry. You can use Asher uh, to take a look at that. These are the A shares in China. This is basically like the Dow, but it, or the S&P, but it's 300 stocks versus 500 stocks. And it's in Shanghai. Uh, and Shenzhen. Uh, anyways, you got Asher hitting another 1.1% uh, uh, higher today. These guys also higher on a presumptive Biden win uh, because it's widely believed or assumed by investors that a Biden win means no real hard rules on China, trade war dropped, tariffs dropped, all that great stuff, and they'll go really easy on China. So if you're looking inside of there, you're going to see a lot of names. Uh, some had earnings, Alibaba had earnings today, but you're going to see a lot of names in that space just riding that wave. Baidu. Uh, you've got New Oriental Education. We happen to own that one. That one's doing real well. Um, as you're looking through there, it doesn't matter really where you look. YY.com, they're killing it. And all of this is based on the election results there. Another thing that's been higher on election, potentially election results, is uh, solar. All right, here's the ETF TAN, T-A-N, to take a look at the solar or alternative energy uh, industry there. Up another 11% on the day. We're excited because we happen to own Solar Edge, which had a little bit of a beatdown from the earnings response there. It's recovered just about half of it, so happy to see that. But if you look inside of there, you got JK Solar, 30% gain on the day. End phase, 13% and hitting new highs. And if you add Solar Edge to that, that makes up about 4% of all the gains in this industry today. So those are your bigger movers there. Also, something I don't normally point out, we got a breakout here. Uh, if you're looking at high yield bonds, right? HYG is one way you can look at that. A breakout to new highs there. A little bit calm today, up about a third of a percent, but all clear here. If you're looking in that high yield space, that's something maybe to pay attention to as well. And one last thing, oh no, uh, two more things. You got gold. Great bounce in gold today, up $53. That's gonna help out things like the, G no. That's, that's the wrong one. That's going to help out things like GDX up 7% on the day, Newmont Mining, one of the big ones there, and XME hinting at a breakout. You always love to see it. Technical traders love a big down day immediately reversed by a big up day. That spells momentum to the upside. Add that to a breakout. People like the XME or technical traders like that going forward. Um, I was just thinking, so did anybody really notice that I was messing with you this week? I, I felt so silly doing some of the things that I was doing, but uh, in a minute, I'll share that with you. I'll edit, uh, we've got an edited uh, post of that of what I was trying to accomplish, but really felt quite silly doing this, but uh, we'll, we'll get to it. I'm, I'm not, i just quit teasing it there. Notable new highs for the day. Hey, basic materials. Those are going to be your big leaders in the new highs today. Albermail. I can never say that. Uh, up 13% on the day. Any basic material stock. You can look at Freeport, MacMoran. Uh, there you go. New highs there. Strong as well. PPG uh, Industries, PPG Group, uh, also higher 4%. Just across the board, your new highs today were mostly in the material space. You had exchanges helping out the financials today. MSCI. Uh, a while back, we did a post in a research site, and I shared it publicly with you guys, where the exchanges were the real leaders inside the financials. That continues. And look, 
As soon as financials wake back up, where does everybody go? They go to where they know the leadership was in the past. That's something that when you learn to dissect that in the markets, you've got that leg up. I'm not saying you can time the markets and all that great stuff, but you have that slight leg up that gets you in just a little bit earlier. So that was a great lesson there that's kind of carried over over the last couple of weeks. Uh, whole logic, again, in the semiconductor space, really, really strong today. Algin. Uh, there you go. Healthcare stock's been really, really strong. We own this one. Uh, obviously, it's been exciting since the earnings gap there, but that momentum continuing. So that updates kind of for uh, customers, let you know that's going well. Illinois Toolworks just pointed this out yesterday. I think this is a real interesting uh, company where they're at right now, the sales that they have from a fundamental perspective, as well as obviously technically it looks really strong as well. So those go on my list today for notable new highs, 74 of them. We could have gone through so many. There were so many good things. You got to look through the new highs list today if you're looking for new opportunity. Uh, that's where it's at right there. So with that in mind, we will move on to our watch list for the day. Um, here's what we're doing. It's a little different. Not everybody's going to like this, but what we did is we looked at the S&P 500 and we said, the markets have been tearing higher here. Um, is this the time to buy the beaten down stocks? Right? When else do you buy beaten down stocks? You certainly don't buy them when the markets are weak, but we have incredible strength in the markets right now. So let's take the S&P 500, look for the stocks that were beaten down the most year to date. A lot of these names are gonna be energy. And let's then see which ones of those have the best support over the last couple days. So they're the weakest, but people are going for those for some reason. They're not going for all the weak stocks out there. And so we have a little watch list to put together for you here. Uh, like I said, a lot of these are going to be energy. Looking at Concho Resources here. It's kind of flat on the day. Uh, it's down 50% year to date. Yesterday it gained 4%. It's up about 7% over the last week here. Now, uh, if you ask me, this is more of a trade if you're looking at following this watch list because uh, their earnings estimates for next year are still down by about 12%. So this is not a fundamental recovery story. This is a company that's still in a little bit of trouble. So I wanna get that one out there. Uh, ConocoPhillips, slight down day today. It's down 53% year to date, gained about 4% yesterday. It's up 5.5% for the week. This is also the highest yielding stock out of the group, about 5.5%. That dividend's still intact. Uh, you got Marathon Oil, uh, down 66% year to date, but it's up 3.1% yesterday, 11% over the last week. It also has the smallest expected loss of any of the energy stocks I'm going to share with you of $650 million. Any other uh, energy companies looking at a, a, over a billion dollars in losses this year? I don't know if that helps the stock or anything. Just want to point that out. One metric that stuck out to me. Uh, Apache. So same thing, basically a no, no plus or minus day. They just flat. Lost 65% uh, so far year to date, was up 3% yesterday, 15% uh, over the last week. The dividend's still at risk here, but it's only 10 cents. Uh, they paid 10 cents overall, so not too big of a deal. Naturally, sticking with energy there. Uh, you've got EOG Resources down 56% year to date, gained 3% yesterday, 11% over the last week. They're still paying a dividend. It's 4.1% overall in the yield. So if you've got 4.1%, you're already getting a 56% discount, and there's a little hint of buying in there. Does that make it a good stock? I don't know. Uh, Wind Resorts, great day today, up 5%. It lost 45% year to date. It's up 2% yesterday, 5% today, and now it's gonna be 15% over the last week. So you've got real momentum there. Uh, they're gonna lose over a billion bucks this year, so you're not playing with somebody that's fundamentally, or is not gonna be profitable this year, but there's money coming into that stock, which now we can see. We can see it was one of the beaten down stocks that has more energy in the short term than many other stocks out there. Lastly, we got Marriott here. A lot of people thinking Marriott's starting to recover up 3% on the day. They're down 35% year to date, 2% yesterday, 3% today. That's gonna to be 12% over the last week. That kind of a bounce with that volume makes that a little bit interesting. And so that is kind of our watch list for the day, a different way of looking at it. Like I said, a lot of people are gonna say, I don't like picking on weak stocks, but if you did, or you had no other thing to look at, that's how you go about looking at those stocks, trying to find ideas there. Uh, so there you go. Let's take a look at some of the stocks in the news. Get this thing rolling here. Uh, we talked about QCOM already. Where, where is the button there? There it is. All right, you got QCOM. That's going to be earnings related overall. They beat on earnings by 27 cents. Raised guidance, beat on revenues. Uh, Well-deserved 12% for them. Like I said, we're happy. We own it. I hope it continues. Uh, General Motors, really good. Truck demand off the charts for them, up 5% on the day. Uh, they beat by $1.40. I think that was the widest beat for the day. $1.40, I believe, was the biggest spread between expected and realized earnings. Uh, revenues as expected got a 
above average move for General Motors there for sure. Uh, Costco is a stock that's in the news, also hitting new 52-week highs. Store sales coming in at 14.4% month over month. Last month it was 15.5%. That's a couple really good months in a row there. Uh, that stock hitting new 52-week highs looking good today with a 2.5% gain. Uh, Apple, Bloomberg actually said Apple is uh, going to have a shortage on their power chips for their new iPhone 12. Didn't really affect the stock there. I'm not sure that that's a truthful story, uh, but that's what they reported. So I put it on there because that means it's in the news. Match Group, uh, you don't have to pretend that you don't know what this is, right? We, we got to talk about it. You can get as uncomfortable as you like. We're, we're going to talk about this. Uh, Match Group uh, hit new highs on earnings. Subscribers are up, right? And everybody's always fascinated with, okay, Match.com, you know, how are they doing? Subscribers up 10.8 million versus 10.1 last quarter. The exciting thing that everybody likes to look at, the fun sort of joke place to look, is uh, Tinder, right? So I, apparently you guys are active on Tinder. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I'm a married guy, so I have to pretend like I've never heard of Tinder. Uh, it's up 6.6 .6 million subscribers. We were expecting 6.4, so more swiping going on there with Tinder. And uh, that is why Match is in the news and at new highs there. Uh, so that's what we have. Now, Friday, tomorrow, we have no uh, show. So sorry about that. Uh, just can't, can't do the show. Uh, we've got earnings from Cody, CVS, Dish Networks, Hershey, ooh, Marriott, watch list. Right, see what we did there? Uh, Malibu Boats, and uh, which we own, and MYL, Mylan Technologies there. Uh, should be past all their mess. Uh, you've also got dividends, ex-dividend. Granger Worldwide paying out $1.53 and almost back to new highs, ex-dividend day. Uh, Ameriprise Financial, got an interesting little breakout there if you're taking a look. Pets.com, they're paying out $0.28. Cents. All right, and Apple's $0.21 cent ex-dividend day is today. So hopefully that helps you out in some way. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're one of our customers, I'll be back with you here in a little while uh, to cover the stock market. Very laid back class tonight. Grab a drink, come hang out with me. I'll have some data and stuff to share with you, but uh, kind of just want to give you an update. Uh, there wasn't going to be a wine and wealth this week, but I hate that. I don't like missing a week. So I'm um, going to stick around. We'll hang out, talk a little bit. Uh, join me in the speakeasy there. And finally, let's see if this works. Did you catch me messing with you this week? Uh, Let's see what you think, and uh, if you like it, hit the subscribe button, thumbs up. What other advisor plays games with you throughout the week, right? They're usually playing their own game. It's called golf. We're playing games with you. Enjoy. See you later. Now, some of the big techs, something that you want to take a look at before you look at, and they say, well, that's the uh, actually doing missing there, but we're different.